Mortgage rates are back above 7% in anticipation of this week's Fed meeting. It seems the bond market is not expecting a rate cut just yet. Housing inventory had another increase this week, and we're still just above 500,000 homes for sale in the country. The 2023 census data was released last week, and it turns out that Dallas-Fort Worth is the number one fastest growing metroplex in the country. We had an increase of 418 people every single day in 2023. We're covering all of this and much more in today's weekly update. My name is Michael. I'm a real estate agent here in the Dallas area, and every Monday I give you a weekly update covering all of Dallas and Collin counties as well as the national housing market. We're looking for trends, we're tracking mortgage rates as well as mortgage purchase applications as that's our best leading indicator to what demand will look like 30 to 90 days from now. We're looking at things like median list price, days on market, how many homes are having price decreases, what's inventory looking like, and if you stick around until the end, it's my favorite part, the top 10 ranked charts of the hottest and coolest cities and zip codes in all of Dallas and Collin County. If this sounds like something you're into, make sure and subscribe. And if you're looking to move in the Dallas area, whether it's next week or next year, I'd love to connect. I've helped every one of these yellow dots find their little piece of Texas, and I'd love to help you too. Just call, text, or shoot me an email. All that is in the description below. Okay, today is March 18th. Let's see what the data is telling us. And if this is an old video, you can click the playlist here. It'll take you to the latest weekly market update. First up is market news, and we're starting with this 2023 census data because this is crazy. The DFW Metroplex now houses over 8.1 million people. We are the number one fastest growing metro in the country. We had a growth of 152,598 people last year, which means our population grew 418 people per day. The demand here is insane. I try to explain this to investors every day, but Dallas is not a cash flow market. It's an appreciation market. There is too much demand here. And I actually made a video recently. If you're an investor wondering about cash flow in the Dallas market, I recommend that you check it out. I'll link it here. But there are a lot of investors buying right now, even at a negative cash flow for this very reason. They're not worried about losing three to $400 a month for their first year because they're expecting both prices and rents to increase over the coming years because they're buying in the number one fastest growing metro in the country. There are not enough homes being built here to sustain 418 more people every day. It's basic supply and demand. Too many people for too few houses. Looking at the top growing counties in the country, Collin County was actually the number two fastest growing county. It added over 36,300 people. So that's Frisco, Prosper, Salina, Melissa, places like that. And then Denton County came in at number six in the country with growth just a few shy of 30,000 people. And that's places like Aubrey and Little Elm. Then Tarrant County over in Fort Worth came in at number nine with a gain of just over 27,000 people. So this is why if you're looking to buy up north, even in Aubrey, Little Elm, Salina, all of those places, you'll see those homes have significantly higher prices than the exact same floor plan of new construction even just 30 minutes away. It's because there is a ton of demand in these counties. Another interesting note is that Dallas County was actually ranked the eighth biggest loser of net population, although it still remains the eighth most populous county in the country. But Dallas County lost 34,330 people. And this is not very surprising considering you can drive 20 to 30 minutes in any direction and buy a brand new house for 70% of what it would cost you in Dallas. A lot of people are willing to make that commute from neighboring counties to get the lower housing prices. And all of these neighboring counties are building new construction like crazy so their supply is going up which helps prices not go through the roof as much and it also helps their populations grow as they can sustain larger populations whereas dallas county we've run out of room to build on so our supply is not going to grow anymore if Dallas wants to grow it's going to have to rezone a lot of these single family lots into multifamily lots most of Dallas was rezoned in the 1980s when things looked very different. And as of today, 86% of residential land in Dallas is zoned for single family houses. This is important for you if you live in Dallas County, because in order to continue growing while your tax base is leaving, Dallas will either have to keep issuing bonds and raising taxes to pay for them, or Dallas needs to make an effort to grow their tax base. If Dallas were to rezone and allow for more supply to be built, it would increase the tax base while also increasing the housing supply, which would not only help keep prices from skyrocketing, but also would likely bring down the overall tax burden for the average resident. And you've seen this done in places like Austin, where you can easily divide your lot into two, build a second house. You can see these all around the South Congress area, and it's one big factor as to why housing prices in Austin have come way down. For example, if you go drive through East Dallas through the Casa View neighborhood or down south in Oak Cliff, these tiny little houses built in the 20s, 30s, and 40s have enormous lots. This is the actual yard of an Airbnb I used to own there in the Casa View neighborhood, and look how enormous that is. And this was for an 800 square foot house. And this entire neighborhood has backyards just as big. You could easily 
divide these lots into two and build a second house, double the supply of the neighborhood, and it wouldn't even feel cramped at all. And all around Dallas, you'll find these little $150,000 fixer-uppers with lots this big. And I think it would be great if the city would allow you to build two homes there. So that's my opinion. Otherwise, Dallas is likely going to continue losing population to the neighboring counties, which will probably lead to an increase in taxes in Dallas County. Okay, moving on, let's start with national housing inventory. This week, we had an increase of just 6,581 homes for sale in the U.S. And so far this year, it's looking more and more likely that we actually already had the inventory bottom for the year back on February 16th. So barring any huge drop in mortgage rates that causes a flood of demand to eat up the supply, I think there's a good chance we've seen the bottom for the year, which would make this seasonal bottom the closest that we've ever been to a normal market since COVID, which would be good news because what we want is to get back to a normal market. Now looking at new listings, this week there were 18,127 more homes listed than the corresponding week last year. That would be from here all the way down to this. Now that was an extreme dip last year, so don't get too excited about the 18,000, but if you look, we are still a little bit above 2022. So both in 22 and 23, we had a dip in that week, and this time we did not. We actually had a small increase. But so far for the year, we're still only basically tracking with 2022 numbers. We still need to get way above this. If we're gonna get out of an inventory shortage, we definitely need more people listing than this. But we also need higher days on market to allow some of this inventory time to stack up, and I think we're gonna get that if rates remain high where they are. So I do think we're gonna see inventory grow for sure this year more than last year. Nowhere near enough to get to a normal market, but maybe in another year or two, we're definitely trending in the right direction. The last thing we cover nationally is the percentage of homes having a price decrease every week. So every year it's normal for a third of homes to take a price cut before selling. And looking at the national chart this week, we're at 31% of homes having a price decrease, barely up 1% from this week last year. And what you need to know is typically this number around this time of the year will start going up every week. Last year we got as high as 39.2%. The year before we got as high as 43.2%. So we're getting close to that time seasonally, plus inventory is increasing, plus mortgage rates are still high. So we should see the number of homes having price cuts before they sell going up from here on out. So if you see this in the coming weeks, that's totally normal for this time of year. And we're just gonna be looking for any really aggressive swings in either direction. And this will be 100% dependent on where rates go. And this number will climb all the way up into mid-November. Okay, moving on to mortgage rates. We started last week way down at a 6.87, which was awesome. But unfortunately, we ended up all the way back up at 7.09. And as I'm looking at the 10 year today, we're gonna go even higher we're probably gonna go back up to around this 7.16. And we're just waiting there until the Fed says what they say. As of now, it seems that the bond market thinks there's no rate cuts, so rates are gonna go back up here. If somehow the Fed says something that sounds like they're gonna cut soon or something, we could see rates drop, but it doesn't seem that the bond market is expecting that and they're smarter than I am, so I'm expecting the same. Now, regarding mortgage purchase applications, this week we actually saw a 4% increase in the number of people applying for mortgages. A lot of that must have been due to the fact that we were down at a 6.85 at the beginning of the week. I'm sure in this coming week, we're gonna see less people applying for mortgages as rates are now over 7% again. So rates are still fully in control of this market, fully in control of demand. And you can see even small moves from seven down to 6.85 leads to a lot more people applying. Okay, before we move on to the local market data, if you're considering buying a home in Dallas in 2024, two things. One, I'm now doing a weekly online home buying webinar. This is for anyone who's considering buying a house in the next year in the DFW market. If that's you, click the link in the description. You can watch the next one or you can watch a replay. Number two, I've developed a max affordability calculator that a lot of you have already used. This will help you very quickly and easily get into the ballpark of how much house you should actually be looking at based on today's rates and your personal financial situation. It'll give you several options to choose from and it takes into account everything all the way down to your tax bracket. It's free to you, so please use it. If you want to learn more about that, you can watch this video next. Okay, moving on to the local markets. We're starting with the MLS data and starting with Dallas County. This week we had 502 listings. That's 34 less than last week. 270 closings, eight more than last week. Of the homes that closed, 62 were immediate sales, meaning they contracted within the first week. That's 23 less than the previous week. 376 homes went under contract. That's six more than last week. And in total, there are 2,422 homes either under contract or in pending status. That's 106 more than last week. Now moving on to Collin County, we had 319 new listings, three less than last week. 205 closings, two more than last week. 60 immediate sales, that's 23 less than last week. 213 went under contract, that's six more than last week. 
and in total there are 1,855 homes either under contract or in pending status. That's 93 more than last week. So we had less listings, more closings, and more homes going under contract last week. Just showing that the market is heating up, which is totally normal for this time of the year. Okay, moving on to the local housing data here. Starting with Dallas County, I use what's called the Market Action Index. It takes into account all of this data puts it in one easy to read graphic with a number, anything a 30 or below is a buyer's market. Above that, we're asking how much of a seller's market are we in? Starting with Dallas County, we are a strong seller's market that is 45 and above. And all we're looking at every week on this is to say, are things looking normal or are they looking weird? And so far, things are looking normal for this time of the year. As you can see, prices are trending up, both the median list price as well as the price of new listings. And don't be worried if you see big jumps one way or the other. We're really just looking for a trend. And it's obvious that prices are trending up totally normal this time of year. Median days on market, holding steady at 42. Number of homes having price decreases had a small tick down, but still around 36, which is a totally normal percentage. Inventory very slowly climbing. We're still not back to where we were even in December, but still climbing better than dropping. And then of course the market action index is heating up. So yes, everything looks totally normal right now. Nothing extreme. Prices aren't going through the roof. Now I will say if rates were to drop right now, these numbers could look very different. So I actually think it's really helpful to keep rates high right now because there just hasn't been enough inventory stacking up. Okay, now we're moving on to Collin County, which tells a similar story, but a little different because Collin County has a ton of new construction compared to Dallas County. So Collin County is actually a 45 as well, same as Dallas, both strong sellers markets. We can see the median list price, and here we can see an example of where prices can move up and down really quickly, but don't pay attention to that. We're looking for the trend. So obviously, 500 to 585 is a massive jump, but don't get scared by that because you see the next week it comes down to 540, and we're just going to see this is going to average up, and it's just going to be a trend saying, this time of the year, prices go up. Median days on market lower than Dallas at a 35. The big thing that I always point out here in Collin County is the number of homes having a price increase. And this is all new construction as existing homes, when you list them, you don't generally increase the price. Especially not when you see eight or 9% of homes having price increases every week, that's gonna be new construction. So pretty consistently, around 8% of homes are having price increases every single week. And actually in last week's video, I zoomed in on what these actual numbers mean, this 8% increase in Collin County, and what it equated to was if you assume that all 8% of the homes having price increases are new construction, it equated to about one third of new construction having a price increase every single week. Now, sometimes it's $1,000, sometimes it's $10,000. But the point is, whatever home builders are seeing there on the ground in their communities, the number of people coming in and contracting, getting approved with their lenders, is telling them there's enough demand to justify raising prices on a third of their homes every single week. Okay, so everything's looking normal. The market's heating up. It's March 18th. That makes perfect sense. Let's move on to the top 10 rank charts of the hottest and coolest cities and zip codes in all of Dallas and Collin counties. And this is using that same market action index number we just discussed. Remember, a 30 or below is a buyer's market. So starting with the absolute hottest cities, Coppell, Texas heats up one spot to take over the number one spot. Grapevine heats up one spot to get to number two. Carrollton cools off one, Louisville cools off three, Plano, Richardson, Allen, and Saxe all maintain their spots. Now Ferris, Texas heats up one, which is insane because this was a buyer's market in January. It was a 28.39 just on January 5th. This was actually the absolute coolest city on the coolest cities list we're about to cover. And now it's number nine on the hottest cities list. So a huge turn. Just look at that line going straight up for Ferris. So Ferris heats up one and then Garland cools off one for the number 10 spot. Now we like to zoom into specific zip codes and you can see this zip code 75035 in Frisco is almost a 70. That is crazy hot. So starting with number one, Frisco 75035, followed by Plano 75023, Garland 75042, Carrollton 75006, Louisville 75077, Dallas 75287, Plano 75025, Louisville 75067, Coppell 75019, and Carrollton 75010. Okay, now we're looking at the exact same thing, but looking at the coolest cities, and not a lot of movement. So Van Alstine remains number one with a 28.13. It's the only buyer's market in all of Dallas and Collin counties, but everything all the way down to Rockwall, Van Alstine, Leonard, White, Wright, Blue Ridge, Seagaville, Nevada, and Rockwall all kept their exact same spots this week. Levon jumps onto the list at number eight. Prosper jumps onto the list at number nine. And Rowlett cools off one to get to the hottest city on the coolest cities list. So Farmersville and Red Oak leave the coolest cities list this week. Now zooming into the zip codes, 
the absolute coolest is Van Alstine, 75495, followed by Dallas, 75203, Dallas, 75204, Leonard, 75452, White Wright, 75491, Rowlett, 75088, Grand Prairie, 75054, Blue Ridge, 75424, Dallas, 75236, and Seagaville, 75159. Remember, if you're looking to buy or sell in the Dallas area, whether it's next week or next year, I'd love to connect. Just call, text, or shoot me an email. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.